This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Please listen to this. Cycles of sin develop because of self-condemnation. Cycles of sin, that sin behavior, that literally it's lasciviousness. It's doing stuff and you can't even find the breaks. It's that addictive behavior, that addictive lasciviousness, uh, um, cycles of behavior. It all shows up because of self-condemnation. And if we condemn ourselves, we cannot get out of the cycle of sin if we maintain condemnation. And we won't get out of condemnation if we maintain the position of self-righteousness. And we won't get out of self-righteousness if we don't deal with that unbelief. I was so amazed when God showed me this. Get equipped to transform your life at Grace Life 2021. It's more than a conference. It's wisdom, knowledge, and revelation to go to the next level in your walk with Christ. Hear from powerful speakers streaming online worldwide, July 15th through the 16th. Learn more at gracelife-conference.org and register now by texting Grace Life to 51555. Let me share a couple of scriptures with you. In Galatians chapter 2.16 in the NLT, this is pretty powerfully put in the New Living Translation. He says, yet we know that a person is made right with God. How are we made right with God? By faith in Jesus Christ. You see, righteousness is not about you. Righteousness is about Him. I'm made right with God by my faith in Jesus' righteousness and not by obeying the law of Moses. And so he says here, you know, by pure fact that you're, you think you're going to be righteous because you perfectly obey the law, he says you're still, you're still trying to pursue rightness through your own efforts and, and, instead of just believing. And he says if you, once you get into that self-righteousness, sin is going to be the result. I have not seen a person who's tried to pursue righteousness. See, here, hear me again. By, by pure fact that you're trying to pursue righteousness, you don't believe the righteousness that's a gift. You don't believe the righteousness that's given to you by Jesus Christ. And so what happens is, he says, yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ and not by obeying the law, and we have believed in Christ. Watch this. We have believed in Christ, Jesus, so that we might be made right with God. Notice, he says, that here's how you're made right with God, by believing in Christ Jesus. But I don't know what it is about the church. We still want to pursue righteousness through our own efforts, through our own performance. And it's unbelief. To pursue right, to enter into self-righteousness, to try to obtain anything through self-righteousness is, is coming from that, that sin of unbelief. He says, Jesus, so that uh, we pursue Jesus so that we might be made right. We believe in Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ we're made right with God, not because we have obeyed the law. That, that, that's a strong thing because th there's no difference between religion and self-righteousness. And religion has trained people that you've got to do all of these things to obtain uh, 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 righteousness and don't, they're not even recognizing you're doing all of these things because you don't believe in the righteousness which comes from God. And if you don't square that out and, and straighten that up, it's going to lead to a lot of sinful behavior. Look at Luke chapter 18, verse 9 through 14. I want to want to go through this with you. Luke chapter 18 and verses 9 through 14. This is so important to me this morning because you know, I, 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 I'm constantly judging myself, am I sh working and striving hard to do something because I don't believe or I'm operating in, in unbelief or maybe disbelief because I've just not been taught right about the thing? All right, look at this, verse 9. 
And he, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and they despised others. Let's read this in the, uh, let's go to the New Living Translation. I want to really amplify this for those of you who are with me this morning. This is something that I believe every Christian deals with. This is something that you've got to get over. We're always concerned about doing our best to deal with sin when God's already dealt with sin, and instead of us just receiving that he's already dealt with sin, we keep pursuing stuff that he's already done, which is a huge sin and will produce sinful behavior. He says here, then Jesus told, told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness. So Jesus was talking to people who had great confidence in their own righteousness. These are religious folks. Religion and, righteous, and self-righteousness are the same. And he scorned everyone else. Now watch this. Now go back to verse 9. I want to make sure I, I, I saw something. Then Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness, self-righteousness, and he scorned everyone else. Verse 10. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee. The other one was a despised tax collector. 11. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. Notice just the fact that he stood by himself. You know, he said, I thank you, God, that I am not a sinner like everyone else. That's self-righteousness. Self-righteousness loves to compare itself amongst itself. Gosh, he says, I'm, I thank you that I'm not a sinner. His whole, his prayer is self-righteous. He says, for I don't cheat. So he's trying to get God to recognize his righteousness based on what he has done. He says, I don't cheat. I don't sin. I, I, he's sinning right now. See, that's, that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. To be in self-righteousness, you're sinning. He says, for I don't cheat, I don't sin, I don't commit adultery, I I'm certainly not like that tax collector. D d the dude's in self-righteousness. He's in sin. He's in the very root of sin. Next verse. I fast twice a week. Check him out. Trying to qualify his righteousness because he obviously doesn't believe the, the righteousness, which is a gift. I fast twice a week. I give you a tenth of my income. I don't know what it is about church. People think they're just so holy because they say, you know, and I'm a tither too. You, you're hopefully doing that because you love God. But that's not going to make you awesome and great because you announce, well, I'm a tither too. He says, but the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow saying, oh God, check it out. Ain't nothing I can do about the, who I am, so I'm asking you to be merciful to me. And I'm not trying to fool you. Be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I'm not coming to you bragging to you about all the things I have done, and I'm not coming to you bragging to you about any of that. He said, Lord, I need your mercy. Look at verse 14. And he says, for I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. Listen, the Pharisee gave every reason why he should be declared righteous or justified before God. The, the, the other guy came and just said, Lord, I have to trust you because I don't have anything that I can come to you and, and, and justify why I should be justified before you. And here's what he says, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Can't you see this issue of self-righteousness? And listen to me carefully about this now. Self-righteousness is when people strive to get right with God. To strive means you work hard, you try hard. Self-righteousness is when you try hard to get right with God. And we have churches filled with people uh, that try, they, they, they spend all their time trying hard to get right with God. And that, the scripture I was saying this morning, you know, be still and know. And, and listen to, I'm, I'm going to say something very controversial, but it is absolutely the truth. Here we go. From heaven's view and from heaven's perspective, self-righteousness is the worst sin a human can commit. From heaven's view and from heaven's perspective, self-righteousness is the worst sin that a human can commit. Because self-righteousness, ladies and gentlemen, is unrighteousness. And self-righteousness just simply says, because I don't believe you and because I don't trust you, I will not rely on you. I will not lean on you. I will do this myself. I will eat the fruit of this tree so that I can be like you and I don't need you. And I'm going to go ahead and instead of needing your glory to cover my nakedness, I'm going to make my own stuff 
it's leading to sin. But we don't do that. We spend so much time looking at the obvious. We look at the sin behavior, which gets worse and worse and worse when you don't deal with the unbelief and when you don't deal with the self-righteousness. The self-righteous person is always talking about how awesome he is. Well, I am so holy that I don't even look at my naked body when I get out of the shower. And I'm so holy I don't even sit around and look at the uh, 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 R-rated movies. And I'm so holy. And you're not understanding. You're holy because of what you have done because you didn't believe what Jesus has done. And that just hits me, man. That just hits me. And, and am I saying, oh, well, you just have a license to do what you want to do? No. I'm saying when you trust God and depend on the Holy Spirit, He starts working on you and changing you and giving you new desires. But, but when you start living differently and when you start living a sin-free life and when you start not operating in such sin behavior, you can't give yourself credit. You can't give yourself credit. I mean, it, it, the Bible talks about when you got saved. He says you're saved by grace and, and not of works so that, in, so that any man, lest any man should boast. See, when you can boast about something, you know you're in self-righteousness. But when things happen in your life, changes happen in your life, then you know that there's no boasting because you leaned and you trusted on God to do that. Come on, let's go to the next one. And so unbelief is there, and unbelief goes into self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is just evidence that you're still in unbelief. But then I, I looked at this next one, condemnation. Condemnation. What, what is it? Please write this down. Get this down. Let's, let's see if we can get it. It's to judge or to pronounce to be unfit for use or service. To judge or to pronounce to be unfit and, and not to be used for service. And that's what the law of Moses was designed to do, to bring about condemnation. Condemnation is all about blame. Condemnation says you're the one to blame. Uh, it means to be guilty, walking around guilty all the time because you couldn't do this on your own. You couldn't accomplish that in self-righteousness. Can't you see? Self-righteous people will always approach condemnation. You're self-righteous. You know, you, you know, you blame yourself. You, you, oh, oh, I'm unfit. Oh, I, 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 I'm condemned. Uh, I, oh, I feel guilty. Because when you did what you did in self-righteousness and it didn't work, it brings about condemnation. Condemnation, uh, it means to sentence to punishment or to doom. Think about that. You did what you did. It didn't work. And so you accept the fact, oh, I should be punished or, oh, I'm no good or, or oh, God, I'm not worthy. Please listen to this. Cycles of sin develop because of self-condemnation. Cycles of sin, that sin behavior that literally it's lasciviousness. It's doing stuff and you can't even find the breaks. It's that addictive behavior, that addictive lasciviousness, uh, um, cycles of behavior. It all shows up because of self-condemnation. And if we condemn ourselves, we cannot get out of the cycle of sin if we maintain condemnation, and we won't get out of condemnation if we maintain the position of self-righteousness, and we won't get out of self-righteousness if we don't deal with that unbelief. I was so amazed when God showed me this. Because to me, it was like this is a way out. I didn't come to you this morning hooping and hollering. I'm saying, dude, we're, we're, we're constantly looking for, uh, you know, the deeper root issue so we, can, the, so we can live a life that pleases God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now look at this. If, if we condemn ourselves, we cannot get out of the cycle of sin. I, I hope you ask the question, why? Why can't we get out? Because we have identified ourselves by our behaviors. We de we we, the reason why you can't get out of that cycle of sin is because you identify yourself with your behavior instead of by our identity in Christ. If you, uh, if you allow what the condemnation to cause you to say, I, I am as I behave, if you, if, you, if you allow your bad behavior to define who you are, then you're never going to get out of that. Uh, and so, you know, instead of you understanding that I am in Christ, my identity is in Christ, you say my identity is in my bad behavior. And when you do that, that cycle of sin, and keep, it'll keep going on. You know, here's what I learned about respect. You know, uh, it, you, you have to really respect yourself uh, and value yourself if, 
you want to not be disrespected and walk in the fear of being disrespected. People that walk in the fear of being disrespected are people who don't value themselves and they don't respect themselves. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, your identity. I, I know you go around saying I'm a Christian, but you don't really believe it. You, you, you really believe that you are a no good for nothing, rotten person because of your behavior. And it just seems so, so uh, like heresy for you to say I'm the righteousness of God and stick with who you are. You're the righteousness of God that misbehaved, but that misbehavior does not identify your identity. And if you can hold on to your identity in Christ, you will get over and have victory over the cycle of sinful behavior. See, here's what, here's what this thing is all about. We will act like what we believe we are. We will act like what we believe we are. If you believe you're righteous, you'll act that way. If you believe you're just a sinner, you'll act that way. We will act like what we believe we are. Now, let's look at this condemnation in Scripture. John, St. John chapter 8, St. John chapter 8, verses 10 and 11, Jesus is dealing with this woman who was taken out of the very act of adultery. She was thrown in the streets. There were religious people around ready to condemn her, ready to say you're not fit, ready to put blame on her, ready to put condemnation on her, ready to say that you, you can't be used anymore. You are now condemned. That's what they were doing. They were ready to say, you put all this stuff on her. And so in verse 10, when Jesus had lifted himself up, when lifted up himself and saw none but the woman after he said, let, let, let you who have uh, no sin cast the first stone, they all left starting with the oldest to the youngest. And he saw none but the woman after they all left. And he said unto the woman, this is awesome, woman, where are those that thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? Now look at verse 11. This is so powerful. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Watch this. And because I don't hold you guilty, and because I don't hold you unfit, Neither do I. I, am, I know what you did, but I don't hold you guilty or unfit. He said, go and sin no more. You see what Jesus was saying? If we can get rid of this condemnation, if you can stop believing that you are how you behave, he says, if you'll go, you'll go and sin no more if you'll recognize that condemnation is the root issue to that adultery that you did that you will recognize that condemnation is the root issue to that sin. Are you still living a life just being condemned? You, 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 you got to understand what I'm saying. When you're condemned, somehow you're self-righteous based in that, that unbelief. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I'll take away the condemnation. There's nobody here to condemn you. I don't condemn you. Since there's no condemnation, go and sin no more. Look at the sinful behavior that can be taken care of when you recognize that there is no condemnation. Well, is it true, Pastor Dollar? Is it true that, that I can live my life with the knowledge that there is no condemnation? Well, let's just go through the Scriptures. Look at 1 John 3, verse 20 and 21. 1 John 3, 20, 21. This condemnation is big. If you could just look in the side of people, you would just see just thousands and maybe millions of people who are Christians, they just like, I'm, I'm just condemned. They wake up guilty. They don't think they can be used of God. They don't think God hears them. A lot don't think God loves them. And, and, and look what he says here, verse 20. He says, for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart. So he says, if there's condemnation, God is greater than that condemnation, and he knoweth all things. So that should be encouraging. If you've got condemnation, God's greater than the condemnation. All right, verse 21. He says, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, watch, what does that mean when my heart doesn't condemn me? First of all, he says, then we have confidence towards God. See, my confidence towards God will be inhibited. It will not be like it should be if I walk around uh, feeling like I can't be used and I'm unfit 
and, and, and guilty. And, and it, it, when there's condemnation there, it's because I don't have confidence towards God. And that goes all the way back to, to unbelief in one form or another. And so, you know, well, Pastor Dollar, I don't know exactly what to do. There you go again. It's always with you, what, what do I have to do? You know, the rich young ruler came up and asked and said to the uh, Lord Jesus, he says, what do I have to do in order to have eternal life? And Jesus was like, you know, I'm trying to give you a hint. I need you to just believe. I need you to just accept me. And he wouldn't do it. He kept talking about what he wanted to do. And that's the same thing today. Your, your number one question, what do I have to do? And then when I tell you to answer, nobody wants to hear it. Believe. Well, it's just got to be more than believe. And this whole system of Christianity is all about believing because if you can believe it first, then you can achieve it second. You can see it take place in your life second. Then have we confidence towards God. Now, look at Romans 8 and 1. This should clear it up, but you got to believe it, Romans 8 and 1. I'm, I'm going to show you something. Romans 8 and 1, even the people that translated the Scripture added the last part because they couldn't believe the first part by itself. Look at what he says. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. The original text stops right there, period. And what he says is, if you're in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation, period. It, it didn't say there's no condemnation if you're in Christ Jesus and if you walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. See, the translator didn't even believe it. The translator didn't even believe it. It's not, it's not there is no condemnation if you walk not after the flesh and, 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 if you don't, and, and if you walk in the Spirit. If you believe that there is no condemnation when you're in Christ Jesus, you won't walk after the flesh and you will walk in the Spirit. But it's not there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus if you can do this, not walk in the flesh and walk in the Spirit. It's, it, go, go do your study. Go do your study. This is not in the original text. The original text stops right there, Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, period. Somebody said, hey, look at that Creflo. Creflo's sitting up there just changed the Bible. He can't be changed the Bible. No, I study. I understand stuff. I'm trying to get you to... <laughs> Let me calm down. Dude, the, the deal is about belief. God is not judging us based on how we behave. God is judging us based on how we believe. He's judging, us, he's judging us on how we believe, man. Don't you understand? If you're just simple belief, only believe, only believe, all things are possible. I remember that song in the Methodist Church when I was a little boy. Only believe, only believe, all things are possible to those that believe. And you know what religion came and did? Somebody just wanted to be all Mr. Smarty. They came up and said, yeah, only believe, only, only believe ain't enough now. You got to do more. I understand to say only believe, but now you got you to you you be holy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be holy if I believe in Jesus. I'm going to be all the things you're trying to get me to be by me trying to do it and earn it myself if I believe in Jesus Christ. The behavior starts right here at not understanding this. And, and let me say, if Jesus sets you free from condemnation, here's what, what blessed me, John 8 and verse 36. If Jesus sets you free from condemnation, here's, here's the thing you, you want to get a hold of. Jesus sets you free from condemnation. Check this out. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, watch this, you shall be free indeed. Uh, you're free indeed. If you believe this, you're free indeed. I'm free indeed. Glory to God, I'm free indeed. I may not be perfect yet. That won't happen until I see God. But boy, I am making progress. And we can all make progress. We can, we can walk in the Spirit and be more spiritual if we will believe. Praise God. Listen to this. Get this. The more people think that God demands righteousness by performance, the more they say, I can't live this Christian life. I'm telling you, man, what I know. The more people think that God demands righteousness by performance, the more they will say, I cannot live this Christian life. Have you found yourself in a cycle of continuously sinning? Do you constantly deal with condemnation and fear? Creflo Dollar takes a revealing look at where sin comes from and how to overcome it in his five message series, The Roots of Sinful Behavior. Cycles of sin develop because of self-condemnation. If you allow your bad behavior to define who you are, then you're never gonna get out of that. You're the righteousness of God, 
that misbehave. But that misbehavior does not identify your identity. And if you can hold on to your identity in Christ, you will get over and have victory over the cycle of sinful behavior. Call the number on your screen or visit creflodollarministries.org and click eStore right now to get your series for a love gift of 30 US dollars plus shipping and handling. Don't miss out. Get yours today. Looking for a deeper understanding of the Word? Join us for service every Sunday at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, no matter where you are. Everything in your life is determined by your thinking. If you change your thinking, you change your life. And you have to change your thinking to be in line with the one who created you. No walls, no limits. Join believers from all over the world as we grow in grace. You've got to get the specific word to think on, and that's the word of grace, the gospel of grace. Set your reminder, invite a friend, and join a worldwide audience of believers. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org or text Watch Now to 51555 for more information about our services and streaming times. Be a part of church without walls. See you online. I pray that this broadcast blessed you today. I want you to pray about sowing a financial seed into this ministry. I also want to extend a special thanks to those of you who have remained our loyal partners, supporters, and friends. Your financial support goes a long, long way. Your donations help equip us with what we need to send this broadcast all over the world. And when you give to this ministry, you partner with us to reach people everywhere who are hurting and in need of the revelation of God's grace and love. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the Word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at creflodollarministries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible.